I decided to go ahead and clean my blower wheel today. It's got some crud in it. Here, you know, in here in the, uh, see there? Um, try the other side. Well, for some reason, the other side doesn't look nearly as bad. I mean, it's not all that great either. But, uh, you see how you can tell. Look at all that. It's time for it to be cleaned. See how this insulation is pulled up like this? I'm going to take a little spray adhesive and just spray it on the uh, areas where I need to make the repair. Let that uh, get tacky. Once it's tacky enough, you can then just kind of put the insulation back into position. It should stick real nice. Not get caught up in the blower wheel or any crazy thing like that. Alright, now that I have the blower out of the air handler, you can tell where uh, some dirt and that's been sitting. I don't really like the looks of all that. So what I did was I went to Walmart and I bought this stuff. Okay. Um, today's Sunday, so I wasn't able to just go to a, a, a air conditioning parts store. So I got this called it's a mold armor. Say it's mold blocker. Alright, now even in the instructions here it says, see, air filters and filter material for furnaces, air conditioners, air purification systems, automobiles, recirculating air handling systems, vacuum cleaner, filters, and aquariums. So, of course, I can't exactly put the uh, Dr. Z stamp of approval on it yet, but I'm going to give it a shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and uh, spray this stuff in here. Now this is something you don't want to do in your own equipment that's fly by me but uh, I'm going to try it out for myself anyway. Unless it claims that it'll do the job. It's probably going to get all kind of remarks about you know uh, how I should be using a uh, different type of mold inhibitor or something like that, but I mean, I'm going to give this a try. I'm the kind of guy that will try just about anything once. And I can't forget these panels that has some dirt on them. Now I have my blower wheel all cleaned up and ready to be reinstalled. See how you can tell that it's cleaner than it was. And uh, that's a good thing. Okay, call me cheap, call me crazy, whatever you want. But, uh, well, here goes. Yeah, it's ready for a couple more weeks. 
now I need to reconnect the wires to the blower motor um, because I had cut them to get the blower out and everything. I could use butt connectors uh, to make the connection right here. See, that's usually my uh, choice of uh, connectors in this case. I would just go ahead and crimp this butt connector on these two pieces of wire here and call it done. But for some weird reason I've decided to use this type of a system here where see I can put uh, one connector here like this and then the which would be the female end and then I could put the male end right here on the other wire. Okay, crimp that on there, and then see simply connect this in here like this. This way, if I want to take the motor out again, I can just pull this apart. So I'll take my crimping tool right here and use the insulating part and uh, squeeze. And see, there I go, I have it, have it connected. So, um, there we go, that's one side. And now I'll crimp this connector on this wire. There we go. And there we have it. Now I'll just repeat the process with these two wires here. Now all I have to do is make the connection here. Hard to do these things with one hand, but uh, I think you get the point. Um, see, it'll look like this right here when I'm done. Here's a little tip for those of you out there that have the ICM CC750. If you continuously read this thing to be in bypass, you might want to check your run capacitor because that's a good possibility to be the problem.